So, talking about um, basicity and resonance, and then trying to understand um, how reactive uh, nitrogen is. So, when we're talking about bases, we're talking about nucleophiles or electrophiles, technically. Nucleophiles, that's right. Right? Bases are electron rich. So, of all the, with all of these molecules I have drawn, these four molecules I have drawn, where are they the most electron rich in all cases? Nitrogen, right? Specifically the lone pair. So let's kind of go through these together and just identify what we know about each of these nitrogen lone pairs, right? Before we try to worry about which one's the most reactive. Let's just write down what we know. So for this first one, I'll call it A. What do we know about the nitrogen lone pair? It can do res. So let's. let's so it can do resin. So what, what is its hybridization state? It's sp2. It's sp2 hybridized. Now it's choosing to be sp2 because it's next to a pi bond. So it wants to have a p orbital. So it puts its lone pair into a p orbital so it can do resonance. Right? That's why it's sp2 hybridized because it's next to a pi bond. It's next to that pi bond. Right? So it's sp2 hybridized lone pair in a p orbital hybridization state in a p orbital, right? Lone pair in a p orbital. Let's go to B. What hybridization state is that nitrogen? It's sp3, right? Notice now, right, there's a break. There's an sp3 hybridized carbon in between. So it's not, this lone pair is not next to a pi bond, so it can't do resonance anymore. What hybrid orbital is that lone pair going to be in? sp3. sp3 hybridized, sp3 hybrid, hybrid orbital. Good? What about C? What's the hybridization state of that nitrogen? It's sp2. Very good. As a lone pair, what hybrid orbital is that lone pair in? It's in an sp2. Very good. A little tricky here, right? This is sp2 hybridized, but its p orbital is being used for this pi bond. So this lone pair, can this lone pair do resonance? No, it's perpendicular to the pi system. This lone pair cannot do resonance, right? It cannot do resonance. So it's kind of hanging out. It's kind of stuck out there, right? It's not part, this is an aromatic ring. This pyridine ring is aromatic, but is this lone pair part of that aromatic system? No. Right? It's not part of it. It's perpendicular, 90 degrees away. All right, D. What's going to be the hybridization state of that nitrogen? It's sp2 as well. Again, it's choosing to be sp2 because it's next to that pi bond next to that pi bond. What hybrid orbital is that lone pair in? P orbital. Absolutely, P orbital. Again, so that way it can do resonance. The electrons have to be in a P orbital so it can do resonance in this P orbital system with all these pi bonds. Excellent. Now let's think about reactivity. So if one is most basic or most reactive, which one is the most reactive and which one's the least and who's in the middle? So usually with these ranking ones, I like to try to find the ends, the end pieces. <clears throat> Do you have any idea which one we think might be the most reactive? Which one? B. B, I agree. B is the most reactive. B. Why do we choose B? There's a couple reasons why I would choose B. It can't, B cannot do resonance. So nitrogen is sp3 and its lone pair is sp3. Nitrogen is sp3 hybridized and its lone pair is in an sp3 orbital. sp3 orbitals are closer to the nucleus or farther away from the nucleus? Farther. Farther. That means they'd be held less tightly. They'd be more reactive. Right? This lone pair is in an sp2 orbital. That's going to be closer to the nucleus. It's going to be held tighter by the positively charged nucleus. That's going to make C, this lone pair, a little bit less reactive. So I would guess this would be the most basic, the most reactive. So what would be the next most reactive one? C, right? The one that's not doing resonance. If you do resonance, right, your lone pairs are doing something else. 
right? They're being a stabilizing the market. They're doing something else. So that's going to make them less likely to react because they're doing something else. So the next most reactive one would be C. And now my tough one, there's a tough one here, A and D. Which one of those do you think is more reactive, A or D? What if, so I want to add something. What if I said, oh, well, there's more pi bonds here. I want to add, a, I want to add another pi bond here for A. So A and B have the equal number of resonance structures. A, I'm sorry, A and D. So A has three pi bonds to work with resonance structures. D has three pi bonds to work with resonance structures. Now which one's most reactive? A. Still A. Okay, well, why? Well, it doesn't, you don't want to break the aromaticity. When A does resonance, it doesn't break aromaticity. When D does resonance, all of a sudden it stops being, it breaks up aromaticity. Excellent. So A and then D. Right? When you do resonance structures with the aromatic rings, that's great that they can do that, but it comes at a cost of right, affecting the aromatic nature of that molecule. This one's not aromatic, so it's much easier to share those electrons throughout. Excellent.